Go with me to the gospel according to Luke the 8th chapter, beginning with verse number 22. The gospel according to Luke the 8th chapter, beginning with verse number 22. And if you give me a few minutes of your time, I hope I can in, incite and enlighten you, give you insight and also give you some enlightenment on exactly where you are and why it's hard for you to praise God. I want you to understand that God does not get mad at you when you find yourself in a storm and you can't believe him like you used to. He doesn't get angry with you. He doesn't get upset with you. God doesn't think the way that we think. He doesn't. Hey, Amen. So thank you. Uh, hmm. Praise the Lord. Luke Gospel, verse 8, begin with verse 22, and we find these words recorded. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's Sister Richardson back there, ain't it? She said, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. She back there hiding. I couldn't even see her back there behind that, that column over there. Glory to God. Good to see you, Sister Richardson. Praise the Lord. We've been praying for you. We see God, God is still a healer. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I was just so, I've just been so focused on Lady Ross. I ain't mad all this morning. Amen. Look, if we can, hey, sister, bless your family. Good to see you, too. Hallelujah. Now I can see everybody else. I can't see nobody but her at first. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hey, mother, bless you. Hallelujah. I didn't even give our visitors a hand. Give our visitors a hand for coming and sharing with us today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not my glasses. Hallelujah. I can see pretty good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 22. King James Version says, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us, somebody say, let us, go over unto the other side of the lake. Now I want you to hold on to that let us part. Thank you. And that's another point. I, I received this word Thursday night on the prayer conference call. Later, Ross had such an awesome word, and God gave me this message, amen, so I'm really, God bless you. I'm coming right after what you blessed us with on Thursday night. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now, and they launched forth. Somebody say, and they launched forth. Two key words, us and they. Hallelujah. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. Anybody ever felt like God was asleep on you? Come on, somebody. You couldn't shake him. You couldn't, you couldn't wake him. You could, Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, and there came down a storm. Anybody know anything about a storm? Of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased. And there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying, one to another. What manner of man is this? See, they still learning Jesus like we still learning Jesus. Y'all understand? I want you to get to see the disciples, they're still learning him. They don't know him that well, but they're learning him each and every time he performs a miracle. They're getting to know him. He said, what manner of man is this? Well, he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obey him. But what about us? And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. Somebody said they made it over. I'm going to make it over too. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We give God glory for his most holy and divine word. Amen. Amen. I had another topic, but that's the topic for today. They made it over. 
We're going to make it too. They made it over. And we're going to make it over too. But let's talk about why they made it over. They made it over because of the person that was with them. I said they made it over because of the person that was with them. I'm reminded of Lady Ross last, she gave a testimony about going down to New Orleans down there when they were talking about the hurricane was going to come. And she said that, yeah, we're going to be all right because I'm here. <laughs> come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Because <laughs> I'm going to go back. I'm going to make it back home. So if, if I'm here, you, you're going to be all right. So, so, so here's what I want us to really grab from this message, too. Just because the Lord says go to the other side don't mean it's going to be smooth sailing. Come on, somebody. You've got to realize that sometimes the Lord is going to lead you and send you directly into a storm. Look at what the word said. The word said that he constrained them. He got them all together and said, look, guys, we're going to get in this boat, and we're going to go over to the other side. Now, the Lord had already said we're going to the other side. Now, why are you getting in the midst of the storm and you get afraid that you're going to die when the Lord? I said, when the Lord said, we're going to go to the other side. Now, he down in the boat sleep. What you worried? Worried. About. We got to realize, my brothers and sisters, that this is this is this is what I've learned. I've discovered that life is just a test. How, why you say that, Pastor? Why you say life is just a test? Because in Hebrews 9 and 27, it says, It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. The judgment? Yeah, it's time to be graded on life's test, your life test. Are y'all still with me? Huh? So life is just a bunch of tests. Some you, there it is, thank you, media ministry. Some you pass, some you fail. But life is just a bunch of tests. And every time, the Bible calls them storms, but I'm calling them tests. You see, when you go through storms, we, we often want to get into a why me or what have I done. No, this is a part of life. This is why he says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials as if some strange thing has happened unto you. No, this is life. Huh? This is life. You're going to be tested. And when the storm comes, what you really need to remember is the Lord said, I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. The Lord will never send you somewhere that you will not get to. I said, the Lord sent you. He, he, it's his responsibility to get you there. If he sent you now, well, I, I, he, I can't help y'all that just went on your own. But if the Lord sent you, if the Lord said go, you best be, you going to make it. Now, in God's infinite wisdom, <laughs> he could not tell you that, I want you to go, but two years down the line, there's going to be a tsunami. There's going to be a tornado. There's going to be a storm. Because the way we think is, we, we'd rather avoid the storm. We'll take the long way around just so we don't have to go by this spot. Uh, Y'all don't want to talk to me today. Huh? Huh? 
We want to avoid every storm. That's why we be watching the weatherman. Where y'all at? I don't even watch the weatherman. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just telling you the truth. I do not watch the weatherman. I don't look to see if it's going to rain, if it's gonna, how hot it's going to I don't think. If I live to see the next day, the, the Lord said that the, the day going to take care of itself. Now, I ain't saying it's wrong. I ain't, the Lord ain't mad at you for watching the news and watching the weather. That's what you want to do. But if the Lord can't keep you in a storm, then he's not really Lord. If the Lord, I've shared, I've shared how the Lord called me a few on a few occasions. But if the Lord had told me that, uh, showed me all the hell that me and my wife are going to have to go through starting this ministry, I'm pretty sure I probably would have said, just all right, Lord, that's all right, I'm good. I'm going to take my chances. I'm keeping it real with you. But what he did, ain't back, he showed me something so pretty, so beautiful, and so something that I couldn't even imagine. You hear me? And I said, yeah, Lord, I'll go. I said, I want to see that. I want to see that I'll go. But along the way, and it didn't take me too long until I filled out that he got me, mama. You hear me? Because after a little while, I realized, man, this ain't what I thought it was going to be. I'm just going to keep it real with you. Because there's a many times when I was like, But the only way that we made it through the storm is because of two things. One, we went where he said go. Come on, somebody. Because, see, when you go the way that he said go, he paid away. If you don't believe me, ask Jonah. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. Jonah said, no, I'm going to Tarsus. And the scripture said, Jonah paid his fare. He paid his fare. Why? Because he's going the opposite direction. If he went the way the Lord said go, his fare would have been paid. Come on, somebody. Huh? So oftentimes when we find ourselves, when, when, when things are, are bad, and, and funds are low, and we have to always pay this and pay that. We might want to examine ourselves and see which way we're going. Somebody said, boom, shakalaka. Because with money always flowing out and nothing flowing in, you might be going to Nineveh, <laughs> to Tarsus. Thank you. Thank y'all, Bible scholars. To Tarsus, when God told you to go to None of them with your smart self. Hallelujah. Huh? You don't believe and Jonah and how we know God would do it because they threw Jonah off the boat and what happened? God had a fish. He already had a ride for him. Come on, somebody. He didn't even have to pay that way. All he had to do was say, yeah, okay, God, I'm going to go the right way. And he got a right. Y'all going to make me run and shout for myself. He got a right the moment he said, okay. The moment you say, okay, Lord, I'm going I'm to quit going there. I'm going to go the right. The moment he said, he said, now you got my provision. Now everything that's mine is yours. He sends us into some storms. He leads us into some storms. But he doesn't leave us in storms. He doesn't leave us in storms. 
Hallelujah. There was another time. Here's what I love about the see, see <laughs> Sometimes we had to keep doing things over and over again. This is just one time that he's, he went across, told him to go to the other side. And, and then the other time, I'm not going to go there for time, but the other time he told him, let's cross over. He told him, y'all going over for me. <laughs> and he went away to pray. And the scripture says that in the fourth watch of the night, which is between 3 and 6 o'clock in the morning, the Lord saw them in a storm on the sea. And the scripture says he came walking. <laughs> I wish I had some Bible scholars sitting here. And the scripture said he came walking a bit on the sea. And they said he almost would have passed them by. He was finna pass them by till they cried out because he had already told them to go to the other side. So the storm wasn't going to stop them. But they stopped him. They cried out to him. And he said, don't be afraid. It is I. You know, and big bad Peter said, Lord, if it's you. <laughs> he doubting, right? He already doubting before he get out the boat. He said, Lord, if it's, if it's you, bid me to come. So the scripture said that Peter steps out and, and begins to walk toward the Lord. But while he's on his way, hallelujah, but while he's on his way, let the baby, let the baby, she all right, she can put that right there, they can stay right there. Now, get back to me. We so easily distracted. Huh? Now, while he's while he Peter is walking toward him on the water, the scripture said that Peter began to look at the wind and the waves and the sea, and he began to sink. Come on, somebody. How many times have we done just like Peter? When we really stepped out and believed God for something. But, uh, but along the way, we, we, we took our eyes off him and we began to look at other stuff and other folk and what other folk were saying, and we began to sink. The Lord stretched out his hand, pulled him up. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. The beautiful part about that scripture is he was already right there at the Lord. The scripture didn't say that the Lord ran over to him. It says he stretched out his hand. He's always, somebody, right there. The Lord is always at hand. He's never far from you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord leads us, and he even sends us into the storm. I'm going to close with this. I believe y'all got it today. I'm going to close with Psalms 23. It's a familiar passage, but sometimes we overlook the power of the Lord's presence in our life. Whenever you get to a place where you can't study. You read and you can't remember what you read. Just go to Psalm 23 and leave it alone. Go to sleep. <laughs> I'll tell you what worked for me. I believe it'll work for you. You use it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me beside the still waters. We, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The same God that leadeth us beside the still waters is the same God that leads us to the storm. He can't be God when it's good and not God when it's bad. He can't be good when it's good and bad when it's bad. Is he good or is he bad? Is God good or is he? Good. 
He restored what? My soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though. Hold on, hold on, hold on, slow down. Yea, though. I. Yea, though. I. God didn't sing you to the valley. Yea, though I walk. Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He's, ev he's even with us when we go the wrong way. How else could he go pick up Jonah if he didn't follow him? He had to be there when he was thrown out the ship. So even though Jonah went the wrong way, the Lord was still there. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but if it had not been for the Lord, not, not mama, daddy, not big mama, them, not your job, not pastor, not kingdom connection, if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you wouldn't be here today. He's the total reason for your existence. Thou prepared the table before me. In the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup. My cup runneth over. The twins. Surely. Goodness. And mercy. They twins. They come on, somebody. We sent them out in twos, right? Good goodness and what? And mercy shall. All in the club, all down in the hood. Goodness and mercy was right there when you was doing the do. How you think you made it home? Goodness and mercy following you. All the days of your life. And I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Lord knows where you are. He knows where you are at all times. Hmm? And for those of you who went the way the Lord told you, he already knew the storm that was awaiting you. But he told you to go anyway. So fret not. Be not afraid. Or will you find yourself today in the struggle, in the storm, <sighs> even in the, in the valleys that you find yourself. And sometimes it's just you wanted, you took a stroll in the valley. God didn't send you, but you took a stroll. But yet the Lord said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's right there with you. We must understand, my brothers and sisters, and I'm, this is my last, I'm closing with this. We must understand that just because the Lord says, yay, or says go, don't mean that it's going to be Easy selling. Amen.
We all going to have to go through some storms, some struggles, some tests. Amen. But you know what I've discovered? Out of all the tests that I've been through, and I've passed pass some and, and failed some, but it's the ones that I've passed that have encouraged me to keep going forward. You see, most of the time we focus on the ones that we fail. But God don't want you to focus on the ones that you fail because he gonna, you're going to have to eventually pass it because <laughs> you're going to get it again. Amen. He wants you to be encouraged and strengthened by your successes, not your failures. And you know what? The Lord going to love you anyway. Anybody? Wait. Well, all the parents said, you, if you have a child, raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. If you have a child, a child, amen, amen. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Just hold your hand up. Be proud. It's a blessing to have children. Everybody can't. I got a child. I got some children. Look. And I, and I guarantee you, anybody in here, I can't speak for everybody, but I believe I can speak for everybody in here. If your child call you and needs you, you finna do all you can to help that child. I don't care whether they been good, bad, or indifferent. And if you can't help them, you're finna be worried <laughs> and praying and trying to figure out how to help my child. And the scripture says, if we being evil, <laughs> how bless your mother, know how to give gifts unto our own. How much more so our father than heaven will give unto us. Amen. I'm encouraged. And I was just talking, me and brother, my friend brother here were just talking back there. That's why I was late coming out here, me and him was talking. Talking about life issues. And life has a way of Beating the faith out you sometimes. Listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. Life has a way of just beating all the belief out you. You thought you believed God. But my Lord. Why has this befallen me? Huh? And I want you to, and I don't want, and I want you to hear this. Don't think God holding it against you when you say, Lord, why me? He does not. I, I recall the Lord and Savior hanging on the cross asking God. He said, God, why have thou forsaken me? So you can get to a place to where you can be like, man, that's just me. It's just me. Ain't no man. Ain't nobody care. I'm by myself. You can get there. Ooh, look like some of y'all there now. I can see it in your eye. Who he he said, tell him again. He said, I ain't mad at you. He said, I'm not mad at you. For not believing and losing hope. But I want you to know that I, I keep my word. This is what God said. I keep my word. I said I would never leave you. I said I'd never forsake you. Ye, especially when you think I'm asleep, remember I'm just in the bottom of the boat. I 
Even when you think I don't hear you because I'm asleep, I'm just in the bottom of the boat. Come down to the bottom of the boat. I'm down there. Come and shake me. Call my name. Call it Jesus. He knows his name. He answers to his name. Problem is sometimes we calling everybody but the Lord. I said we be calling everybody but but the Lord. So how you expect him to answer? I said how you expect him to answer when you won't even call his name? Oh, y'all in the storm. Come on. Come on. Listen. Oh, sh- oh, oh, stop, 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 stop. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. All y'all in the storm. Okay. Come first. Just in the storm. Come on. In the storm. I'm in the storm. I'm, 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 I'm in the storm. In the midst of the storm. Now, the rest of you, the rest of you that's still sitting down, you, what you're saying is you're not in the storm. But what I'm saying is, what the Lord wants you to know is, is that you're getting ready to head to one. Y'all, be, y'all better catch what I'm saying. Either you you in the storm or you on your way to one, because the Lord will send you and he will lead you into a storm. That's life. So if you're in here today, this altar call is for you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what we're going to break today is we're going to break the fear of the storm. We're going to break the fear of the storm. Because as long as you're not afraid, the storm can't really touch you. It was only when Peter began to be fearful and afraid that he began to sink. Hallelujah. It don't make no difference how big the storm is. The Lord is with me. And if the Lord is with me, I'm going to make it through this storm. I ain't got to try to hide from the storm. I ain't got to try to go around the storm. You know, so many people have died trying to outrun tornadoes. When they had just got out the car and sit their butt down somewhere, they would have been all right. But fear causes us to run to and fro. When God said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still, keep your mouth shut, just be quiet, sit down, and believe me for who I am. I'm, he's just not your salvation when you die. He's your salvation while you're alive. I can't count the time where the Lord has saved me. He's been my Savior over and over and over again. Matter of fact, he's saving you from something right now you don't even know. I said he's saving you from something right now you don't even know what's about to come upon you. So 
sons, this is the Lord talking to me, not me. Sons, daughters, be not afraid. For the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. What comes at night, you can't even see it, but the Lord allows you to see the next day. The arrows that fly by day, they flying over your head. It's always somebody shooting darts, and saying something, doing something wicked and evil. But the Lord keeps us through it all. I rebuke the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. That sound mind knows that whatever God allows to come my way, whatever he allows to come my way, he's going to see me through it. And even when I go and, st and walk down the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with me. And the reason why he really don't mind you saying, why me, Lord? Because sometimes that's the only time he hear from you. Oh, God. The only time he hear is when it's a question of why. Sometimes he say, I even have to allow the storm to go a little longer just so I can hear your voice again. He said, I created you. I made your voice. I long to hear your, your voice. So sometimes he said, why me is enough, good enough for you? To let him know that at least he's still there. He's still there. <laughs> you ain't give up on him. I'm trying to get you to... He said, at least I know they ain't gave up on me. She said, why? She said, why? He said, why me? No more fear here. Say that with me. Speak it. I need you to speak it. No more fear here. No more fear here. No more fear here. Keep saying it. This is this is the, this is the your, this is his mantra for you. Whenever that little try to creep, that feeling try to creep in, your mantra, no more fear here. Because you can't be in faith and fear at the same time. No more fear here. Hold, get that in your spirit. No more fear here. It was Wednesday night we were dealing with this, and I'm going to stop with this because I believe God is, he was, you got it. We did, I talked about how the enemy, who the Bible says is as a roaring lion. He's as a roaring, and the way that a lion gets his prey is he, he gets up on a high place, and he roars. Now, I don't know if you ever really physically have been close to a, a lion that roars, but I went to the zoo once, and I'll never forget the lion roared, and I could feel it going through my body. Yeah. And when he roars, everything else gets afraid. Yeah. And what does it do? It runs. Yeah. And that's how he roars, how to pounce on it and kill his prey. So it's the fear factor. Yeah. 
that the enemy wants to use to get you to move, go to and fro, back and forth, so he can pounce on you and devour you. When God just said, be still. When the line go to ruin, you just sit down somewhere. Let that Negro get somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stand still and see the salvation. Salvation of the Lord. Come on, get the Lord a hand, praise. Come on, bless the Lord. Come on. I know you couldn't do it when you came in. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember this. Remember this as you go to your seat. Remember this. I'm looking for somebody to say, no, no fear, fear, fear here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Look at the Lord. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord get on the bicycle. Look at the Lord get, got, got little bicycles for your leg. Woo! Thank you, Lord. We look to see her. We look, we, man, we thank. That's progress. That means she getting better. See, every, every healing ain't instant. I, I better not go there because I'm going to be another 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm not going to leave it like that, mother. Every healing ain't the answer. Sometimes the Lord had them to do something. They had to go through a series of things. Come on, somebody. Before the healing came. But then sometimes he healed them immediately. But every healing is not, not immediate. Glory to God. So be encouraged, all of us that are still got some ailments. God is still yet healing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Bless the Lord. 